Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... My food is the best you'll find probably in the north of England. Why are they trying to do? Kill me in one meal. ..to dodgy decor... There should be a law against pink towels. Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. It's absolutely filthy. ..or her quest for perfection. That is a campaign, definitely. That, that is. It's personal. Wake up, hello. Yeah. Hotel is personal, but this is a business. This week, the clock is ticking for the hotel inspector. The ceaseless tick-tock, tick-tock seem to mark the lifeblood draining out of me. Your average room rate is pathetic. Oh, bollocks, oh, bollocks. I have lost three-quarters of a million pounds. I mean, how can I feel about the hotel? Just give up all hope, because otherwise I just... I can't be asked to do this. Bollocks. The 17th century Rutland Arms Hotel in Bakewell, Derbyshire, owned by 68-year-old former solicitor David Donegan. Oh, rollocks, bollocks, oh, rollocks, oh, rollocks. He bought the hotel 12 years ago with a dream of retiring on the profits. My idea of any hotel was to come along once a week, open the till, take out a load of money and then disappear off home. But the reality has been oh. somewhat different. Fuck. Fucking hell. No, fuck! All I do is work harder and harder and harder for less and less and less return. Situated at the edge of the Peak District National Park, the hotel has good occupancy in summer, but come the winter, the situation is dire. January and February are desperate months, and if we have one lonely customer coming in the door, we'll be, we'll be sort of quite fortunate. We can lose £50,000 quite comfortably between um, January the 1st and the end of March. The hotel has around 30 staff, but after a barrage of bad reviews about service and cleanliness, David has taken matters into his own hands. Can I just give this a little bit of a wipe before you... No one ever does any bloody wiping around here. Bum, bum. He now spends his days cleaning... So I'm a first-class bulk cleaner. Yes, that will do. Working the bar and reception. I'm not quite sure well, that's, uh, what you do with that, but anyway. My name is Mr Incompetent, by the way. So, uh... <laughs> and tending to his precious collection of antique clocks. I tend to have a fetish about buying clocks, unfortunately. What time is it now? I can't see. You can't have a favourite. It's like old Hefner asking who's his favourite girlfriend. I mean, you know, difficult, I think. For David, Owning the Rutland Arms has become a wind-up. There are so many ways to lose money, but, I mean, I have fallen into every one of them. Fellow comes off the road and says, Mr Donegan, I'd love to paint your portrait. So he comes back in about three weeks, uh, puts that on the wall, asks me what I think of it, and, of course, you have to, well, I mean, you know, it's for gratis, for nothing. I say, delighted. He then handed me an envelope with a billing for a £1,000. So I was a bit uh, teed off about that. Most of the clocks, they're worth about half of what I paid for them, so uh, another failure to mark up. Now, I've lost something like three quarters of a million pounds in 12 years, so that's uh, how bad they got. Time is running out for David and the Rutland Arms, and he simply can't afford any more slip-ups. Why, Jeff? <laughs> you bastard! Facing financial ruin, David has called on renowned hotelier Alex Polizzi for help. And there it is. A very imposing building, right on the main thoroughfare. It looks wonderful from the outside. You certainly can't see any problems that may lurk within. 
But it's not just the hotel inspector's expertise that David's interested in. Yes, I'd rather see Pelosi's boobs than your, your ugly face. I just uh, think she's a really sexy woman, so <laughs> magnificent. Well, I got to the stage in my life where desire outseeds performance. <laughs> but will Alex be able to revive Mr. Donegan's ailing fortunes? Oh, good morning. Alex Polizzi. Oh, delighted to meet you. Hello. Delighted to meet you. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me here. Now, shall we go to your room? Is that I'd the next love thing? that. Yes, please. My normal policy is if the customer is younger than myself, they carry their own bag. That's but, uh, fine, but, by uh, me. In your case, well, I... Uh, no, no. <laughs> I insist. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Up the stairs and we go to the right. OK, thank you. To try and find out where the Rutland is going wrong, Alex will stay the night. Now, this is room eight. It's a lovely room, thank you. There's the uh, tea things are there, the bathroom is through there. We've got rid of the, the rats, so everything else seems... I think, <laughs> I, I've, I've checked the room myself, so everything's been done. Thank Fine. you very thank you. much. Well, this is a perfectly nice room. The carpet's clean. The bed's solid. And usually I've got a nice clean bathroom, which is a joy. Since I spent, I suppose, two hours in her room yesterday, <laughs> cleaning it from top to bottom, I hope they're reasonably good. So far, there's no sign of the bad housekeeping that online reviews frequently complain about. Alex wants to know if the same high standard is maintained in the rest of the hotel. There's lots of trailing wires everywhere. I don't understand why there's one curtain tie back and not the other one. The kettle's really grimy. And let's see. Yep, there's water in there. God only knows how long the water's been there. Next, room 17 reserved and awaiting the guests' arrival. Look at this valance. This ruched bit is supposed to be where the end of the mattress sits. This really annoys me. Oh, my goodness. There's all... There's lots of stuff here. It's all very messy. And a bigger shock lurks in the bathroom. Oh my goodness, look at the state of this mirror. Oh, God, and this loo hasn't been cleaned. There's hairs everywhere. I'm not sure if anyone's checked this room. If they have, it's completely inexcusable. There should be someone making sure that the guests who arrive here aren't going to find what I just have. With guests potentially checking in at any moment, Alex heads straight to reception. Hi, yeah. Room 17, the loo's not being cleaned and there's a filthy mirror in the bathroom. No, I'm not joking. I don't want someone to turn up in that room and it to be left like that. Is there anyone who can tackle it? Thirty minutes later, after several phone calls, the room is cleaned. But the failure to act quickly and decisively has left Alex livid. If in the afternoon someone checks in and the rooms are in that kind of mess, it just isn't good enough that a receptionist says, oh, well, I'll try and call a housekeeper and get them to come in. No, you get a sodding bucket and you clean out the fucking bath. It's not that hard to do, is it? We all do it in our own houses. You know, what does it take to clean out a loo, to clean out a bath, to do a basin, to do a mirror? It's a bad start, and Alex's investigation has only just begun. Everyone seems to be desperately running around, rather like headless chickens. It's a seven, Mr. Dean. It's a seven? Yeah. Bollocks! So, no, we're going to have to... Uh, oh, bollocks, oh, bollocks. Charming as you are, you're not very competent. I keep on complaining, moaning, groaning. I know, but none of that actually helps. He doesn't engender any confidence about his own hotel. Former solicitor and clock collector David Donegan bought the 34-bedroom Rutland Arms Hotel in Bakewell 12 years ago. But his dream of sitting back and raking in the profits has turned sour. My idea of owning a hotel was to come along once a week, open the till, take out a load of money and then disappear off home. 
with time running out, he's called on award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi for help. Last night, she uncovered sloppy housekeeping. Oh, God, and this loo hasn't been cleaned. There's hairs everywhere. And ineffectual staff. Yeah. It just isn't good enough that a receptionist says, oh, well, I'll try and call a housekeeper and get them to come in. No, you get a sodding bucket and you clean out the fucking bar. This morning, her investigation continues, starting with the Rutland's reception area. This whole reception doesn't do him any favours. I hate the collection of disparate objects, as usual, that are littered absolutely everywhere. I mean, you're here. You don't know, need to know how to find us, do you? Why is this? Why is this? It crams it all in, and it just all looks really messy. I also hate all the signage. The whole reception area has got so much stuff there that it doesn't feel very easy to access the person behind the desk. Good afternoon, Rutland Arms Hotel. Ross speaking. I can help. It all adds up to a poor first impression for guests. Next up, breakfast. Hello. Hello. Can I please have the oat smoked salmon and soft scrambled egg? Yeah. Brown toast. Yeah. And please, can I have a double espresso with hot milk? Thank you. Alex is underwhelmed by the service. But the breakfast itself hits the spot. It's really good. Alex seeks out head chef Greg to find out where he thinks the hotel is failing. Do you have rosettes here? Yeah, I've got one. I'm for, well, we should have two, but we got marked down from AA because I'm a chronic on the, on the service and things like that. I kind of think that one problem is it's kind of quite tentative, the service. I mean, uh -huh. certainly at breakfast today, that poor young man is deeply out of his depth. It doesn't feel like a very professional operation. Everyone seems quite well-meaning, I mean, uh -huh. staff-wise. They're just not very highly trained, are they? No, there there no. just doesn't seem to be much... Of no, I don't think that's a fault of their own, to be honest. I think no, no. That's to do I with mean, you don't self-train, yeah. do you? <sighs> well... After that meeting with Greg, I've just got more questions and more worries, actually. At the end of the day, it's very easy for me to go to Mr Donegan and say his rooms aren't being cleaned adequately and we can put procedures into place for that very quickly. It's much harder for me to put in a management structure, which is ultimately my challenge here. The lack of staff training is alarming. Next, Alex wants to talk to the closest thing the Rutland has to a manager part-time marketing girl, Denise. Denise, Mr Donegan took you on to help him with marketing, That's didn't correct, he? Yes. How much marketing do you actually get a chance to do? Um, at this present moment in time, very, very little. I um, do anything from disciplinary hearings to hiring to worrying about the fire extinguishers, everything. There isn't another member of staff who's ever worked in the hotel industry, so there's a lack of training, there's yep. a lack of knowledge. Yep. There is nervousness within the staff. Mr Donegan very, very rarely would compliment in fact, I would say he never compliments his team. He, he could tell you exactly how much money he's lost, but he would never say to them yeah, that was a great meal or anything else. Alex has discovered a distinct lack of leadership. Scrubber, down here, otherwise you're going to be instantly dismissed. Get down here, you bloody bitch. Come on, wait. And a hotel in chaos. The more people I talk to in this hotel, the more dire it appears the situation actually is. I don't know, firefighting is a perfect analogy here. Everyone seems to be desperately running around, rather like headless chickens, not knowing where the next drama is going to strike. So what is? Seven. So seven? Yeah. What was the five? No, seven. Bollocks! So in other words, we're going to have to... Uh, oh, bollocks, oh, bollocks. The ceaseless tick-tock, tick-tocking of all these clocks all round the hotel seem to mark the lifeblood draining out of me, just as it is out of this building. It's time for Alex to confront Mr Donegan with her findings. Firstly, the hotel's shoddy housekeeping. General cleanliness isn't what it should be. Yes. 
immediately needs to be tackled because, yes. you know, we don't need another bad review. Yes. Reception, when you arrive, just looks, um, you know, there's stuff everywhere and there's dead flowers. I, yes. mean, I mean, that's completely yes, I mean, unacceptable. Yes, 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 I mean, yes, how I come no one notices that? Yes, uh, oh, blind mice. If someone has to decide who, how they clean the rooms and what a standard is, an operating procedure, what are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to open the drawers at the bedside tables? Are they supposed to empty out the kettles of water? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it all should be laid down. You need to formalise what people's jobs are. Next, the question of the dismal off-season occupancy rates. Your average room rate is pathetic. There's two ways to make more money. You increase your occupancy or you increase your room rate. And I know you're worrying because you're not making money, but the only person who's tackling it mentally is Denise. No, I quite accept that. Finally, and most importantly, the hotel's lack of strong leadership. Don, you can tiddly pom around the corridors as much as you like winding the clocks and you clear tables and you clean bathrooms and you do a lot of the firefighting too. But there's no sense of order. Charming as you are, you're not very competent. Yeah, absolutely right. But of course, it was never my intention to, to run a hotel. I, my intention was to own a hotel and have somebody else run it. You need oh, yes. to get a grip of this. Oh, indeed, yes. I think you have to accept wholeheartedly the responsibility either for hiring someone to make sure that things are done or making sure that it happens yourself. Um, I mean, yes, I, I accept that. Um, bob -om, I agree with you entirely. Um... You know, we don't have years to work this out. We've got months. With no time to lose, Alex wants immediate action. Mr Donegan needs to stop cleaning the hotel himself and create a standardised procedure for his housekeeping staff to follow. OK, when I come into a room, I always start with everything clockwise. So clockwise. By introducing a methodical checklist, Alex hopes to ensure the housekeeping is always up to scratch. So, I would see, is the kettle clean? No, it's not particularly. Is it empty of water? I've gone into room after yes. room with yes. those manky kettles. Yes. Yes, good. OK. Good. Always check drawers. In every room, it has been different. So yes. let's decide what belongs in every yes, drawer. Yes. Does this light work is the next question. Mm. Both curtains are tied back, which yes. is correct, yes, exactly. of course. Yes. She's a bit like a schoolmistress. It's just good common sense, really. Simple stuff, yes, no, but uh, yeah. although it's simple, it's something that uh, this hotel hasn't, uh, hasn't been following. In a bathroom, especially a modern tiled one, regularly the, the tiles should be wiped down. And then, again, you go around it clockwise, you know, bath, plug hole, radiator, the towel's yes, correct, yes. loo, make sure you lift up the loo seat. Yes. So basically, again, we're back to standardisation. Standardisation. Yeah. Yes, it makes sense. Alex's housekeeping checklist will guide the staff and prevent David from getting bogged down in the cleaning. Hopefully, with Alex uh, putting her foot up my bottom, um, we'll be able to achieve uh, good standards. Uh, and of course, as you well know, I was uh, most attracted to her bosoms. But she really is a formidable person, isn't she? Yes, I'm looking forward to working with her. And hopefully her bosoms. <laughs> Darling, I know it's been an awful lot to yes, take in, indeed. and I'm sorry because I feel like I've battered you. You have. But, you know, I, I'm a great one for grasping the bull by the horns, and we only have so much time, and I want to be as helpful to you as I can. And so I want you to square your shoulders and keep your chin up. And yes, indeed. Don't be too downhearted, Professor. Is there any chance yeah. that I perhaps could go down to London in your car and you could stay here and <laughs> do... No. No, I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, bye. Goodbye. Alex leaves Mr Donegan with clear instructions. The clutter must be banished from reception and cleanliness in the rooms must be improved. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take All of the day. staff must have clear systems and training and the chaotic hotel needs an experienced and competent leader. <laughs> Two weeks later, 
and it seems little has changed. After an initial effort at enforcing a new housekeeping regime, David is back to getting low down and dirty. Come on, scrubber, come and give me a hand, scrubber. I drew up a crash list of um, what ought to happen in bedrooms, and uh, I clean the bath, make sure there's no thingamajigs, horribles down the bogs, put bleach down the bogs, clean the toilet seats. I draw a whole, a whole list of what action should be taken. I photostat there's about 100 copies of these, uh, and they've all disappeared. I've given up on the cleaners, really. It's quicker and easier for me to do it myself and to try and... Bomb, bomb. With the business going down the pan, the owner is spending more time chasing pubes than profit. And I've noticed this. It's bloody hard picking up hairs in bathrooms. Yeah, they're everywhere. And, of course, you wipe them, and all they do, they stick to the cloth. And, of course, you, then you rinse the cloth out in the sink, but it doesn't get rid of them. So all you're doing, you're chasing bloody hairs around the bleeding floor. <laughs> you know, it's... So will the hotel inspector be able to get the Rutland running like clockwork? Pop, 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 pop. Everyone has to muck in on all Yes, parts. well, everything you've mentioned, we don't do. Or is all the ticking... Fuck, it stopped again. ...merely a bomb about to go off? You keep on telling people how badly you do everything. I can just see uh, how difficult it's going to be to alter the way the hotel is run. Well, then just give up all hope, because otherwise I just... I can't be asked to do this. Bollocks. The Rutland Arms in Bakewell has been a haven for travellers to the Peak District since the 17th century. But the hotel is far from a picture-perfect postcard. The more people I talk to in this hotel, the more dire it appears the situation actually is. With losses mounting, its owner, retired solicitor and clock collector David Donegan... Fuck, it stopped again. No, it hasn't. ..is rapidly running out of money and time. Bum, bum. I'm totally fatalistic about the hotel. I mean, how long can you go on losing money? Um, it's the last throw of the dice, as it were. He's turned to expert hotelier Alex Polizzi for help. But so far, she's discovered dodgy housekeeping. There's stuff everywhere and there's dead flowers. Yes, I mean, yes, how I come agree. no one notices that? A structureless hotel with inexperienced staff left to fend for themselves. Everyone seems to be desperately running around, rather like headless chickens, not knowing where the next drama's going to strike and an owner whose leadership skills leave a lot to be desired. Fucking hell. No, oh, fuck! Now Alex is back in Derbyshire to find out if Mr Donegan has managed to get a grip of his chaotic hotel. When I was last here, I spoke to Mr Donegan a lot about the necessity of having a manager, someone who would do all the bits that he clearly either didn't want or wasn't capable of doing himself. So what I most hope to see today, now that I'm back, is that there is a stronger sense of leadership here, that someone's taking control of the situation and someone's showing the staff which way to go. Mr Donegan. Oh, Alex, hello. How are you? Good morning, I'm delighted to see you. Lovely to see you. I like the fact that the reception desk is all clear. Well, I know. We, I, I, took, I took your uh, comments on board and I told them to clear everything. But it, actually, it was clearer than this. I don't know what this is doing here. But it, it does look much better. It, it looks much yes. more professional. Yes. Indeed. And yes. clearer. I, I like agree, it. Yes. I think, yes, absolutely. So I'm assuming that same wind of change has swept through the whole of the hotel. How's the housekeeping going? <laughs> Better, but not um, not as well as I would hope. Uh, I keep on complaining, moaning, groaning. I know, but none of that actually helps. All it does no. is create bad feeling. That's what you right, have to yes. do is make sure you set up yes. a system exactly. that is then adhered to. You don't have to be nasty. You just have to have expectations that you stick to. Mr Donegan continues to fiddle while the Rutland burns. So Alex calls a meeting to get to the bottom of why the proprietor is not getting the most out of his staff. I mean, what sort of atmosphere do we have in the hotel? I don't know, of course. What's, I mean, how is the atmosphere in the hotel, would you say? Gloomy. Pun? Gloomy. Gloomy? Why is it gloomy? I don't know. How would you improve staff morale? 
don't put as many people on it at one time. Keep people busy. Yeah. Morale is at rock bottom. Without clearly defined systems and roles, the staff are confused, bored and miserable. A great a large part of it is making sure that people understand that their responsibilities lie other than just, for example, a waitress. Their responsibility is not just to serve the tables. Their responsibility is to walk around the ground floor, make sure that the tables and chairs in the bar are arranged as they should be, that tables are clean and tidy. You know, everyone has to muck in on all Yes, fronts. well, everything you've mentioned in this last 30 seconds we don't do. Uh, the glass is not clean, the magazines aren't tidied up, the seats aren't puffed up, the tables aren't wiped, because I'm the only bugger in the hotel who does them. The one thing that really makes a difference is positivity, and he doesn't engender any confidence about his own hotel. I don't think that that is a way to start improving your business. I think you need to think positive and act positive. But stop feeling sorry for yourself no, and well, think about yes, how to know, change it. Yes, well, yes, it is a fact in this hotel, everyone does the least that they can get away with. Everyone, without exception. <laughs> I do my fair share. I do I you do, do I but I've noticed there's no-one in the hotel who does more than they should. I mean, at the end of the day, mm. I think we all agree that actually we all work for someone who notices our work too. David, sometimes a thank you is better than ten pound in Yes, well, because like, I... You I know, yes, I know, it's very difficult to... Uh... It's not difficult to say thank you. Well... That's amazing how much morale it boosts up. But I think we have to decide something positive, which is how do we move this forward? Exactly, yes. Because, actually, I think you have to start formalising some procedures. It appears David is all stick and no carrot. Now the realisation of what it means for his hotel is driving him to despair. I'm totally fatalistic about the hotel. I've been here 12 years. I have lost three quarters of a million pounds. I mean, how can I feel about the hotel? If I can't get the staff on board to operate uh, properly, then we've got no, there's no chance that it's going to work. Um, I suppose the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. We'll just have to see how it, uh, how it works out. I've been down here every bloody day and it really is uh, not the way I want to, uh, you know, the, the remainder of my life to, to be. But Alex isn't ready to give up on the Rutland Arms or its owner just yet. I think I need to find a way to talk to him and try and lift his spirits a bit. I do not want to walk away from here thinking that I've made his life worse. Alex has a plan to try and improve the hotel's dismal out-of-season occupancy rate and bring in some much-needed extra revenue during the quieter months. I've been racking my brains about how I can best help you in the hotel to improve your turnover and also increase your room occupancy. We know yes. you have a short but good season, so it's really out of season we need to tackle. And obviously one of the ways you fill the rooms is by making sure that this function room yes. is properly occupied. I wouldn't find it appealing. If I walked in here, it takes no, quite really, a yes. lot of imagination no, it does. It does. To, to determine how you could make it the day of your dreams, Yes, you know. I'm sure that's right. Alex believes the underused ballroom could be key to increasing lucrative events at the hotel and filling up the bedrooms during the quiet weekdays and winter period. But first, she'll need to tackle the tacky carpet covering much of the dance floor, banish the bland furniture and transform the depressing colour scheme. I certainly feel a lot more encouraged. Uh... You need to be cheerful because actually, you know, you being downhearted doesn't help anybody. Yeah. And, you know, people look to you and you have to keep the faith. No, I'm sure that's right. Yes, I won't get drunk this yes. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Alex knows the success of her plan will depend on David embracing his role as owner and adopting a new, more positive attitude. I expect him as an owner to step up to the plate and do what he needs to do, whatever he needs to do, to try and make a bigger success of his hotel. But I'm only too aware of the pitfalls that Mr Donegan's character seemed to lay for him.
One month later, and there's major progress at the Rutland Arms. That's grand, and what's the name on the car, please? David has employed a management company to provide the disorganised establishment with systems and structure. And the hotel now has an experienced manager on the ground. With 25 years of experience in the business, John is a welcome and much needed addition. There's a clear leader in the hotel now, which is me. They are very capable and a very good team who work here. All they need is a manager to coordinate them properly. Yes, John is addressing all the uh, matters that Alex uh, indicated that should be addressed. I think he's now doing um, you know, a very good job. In the ballroom, the walls have been repainted and the workers exposed an impressive dance floor. Pop, 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 pop. Although Mr Donegan isn't yet convinced. Bum, 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 bum. I feel like vomiting. <laughs> well, that's better. I mean, that's much better. Two weeks later, and Alex is back to witness the transformation. Tired and dreary, the ballroom was an underused afterthought. Now it has a fresh colour scheme with modern blinds to bring it right up to date. The carpets have gone to reveal an eye-catching and valuable wooden dance floor. The room is now the perfect backdrop for any event, from an evening party to a business conference or a glamorous wedding reception. But will David approve of his new multifunctional ballroom? Bum, bum, bum. Mr Donning. Ah. Good morning. Darling, your new ballroom, what do you think? Well, I, I regret to say that I'm favourably impressed. Are you? Good. I think it's very important that we make sure that this room pays its way in your yes, hotel. Yes. It's a very underutilised asset. The ballroom is a big hit with Mr Donegan. Now Alex wants to know if the new manager is too. So you're getting on with John, it's working out the whole relationship. Um, I don't like the fellow, but there again, I have to admit that he seems to be competent. I do think that things look cleaner yes. and more. it looks all quite pared down. As he seems actually to have rolled his sleeves up and actually be getting involved in the nitty gritty, it can only be a good thing. I, I've obviously got to step back because whatever I'm doing, it's not right, it's, you know, it's wrong. With an experienced new manager in place, service and cleanliness improving, and a reinvigorated ballroom, things are looking up for the Rutland Arms. But there is still one major fly in the ointment. I was hoping that he would take more initiative instead of constantly harping on about the inadequacies of himself and the hotel. Well, of course, I'm not the person there, you see. I'm a half-wit, so... Thank you very much is what he should have said. Yes. He's not very good at saying thank you. You must also think that I've lost a million pounds. Well, then just... Give up all hopes. If you honestly think that, what is the point? When former solicitor David Donegan bought the 34-bedroom Rutland Arms in Bakewell, he dreamt of sitting back and raking in the profits. Bum, bum, bum. But 12 bleak years later, the 17th century hotel is blighted by bad reviews and has cost its owner a small fortune. It's made no money whilst I've been here. And then, of course, if uh, history continues, then uh, we're banjoxed. Simple as that. Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi is attempting to stem the tide. New manager John has provided some desperately needed leadership and the frequently berated service and room cleanliness has improved. Now Alex wants to put the freshly decorated ballroom to good use and generate some new revenue for the beleaguered hotel. She's brought in three local wedding experts in the hope that Mr Donegan will impress and forge lucrative new relationships. 
this is our opportunity to really sell the hotel and sell the room. Yes. Will you try and stay very focused? I know it's focused. hard for you, but I, I, I do want all your charm, Mr. D. I haven't you, got any. Try not to be too irreverent yes, or irrelevant. Yes. That's right. But OK. The, but... but can the Rutland's owner step up his game and convince the ladies that his hotel can deliver the perfect Peak District wedding? So, ladies, what do you think of the room? Well, it's a blank canvas, so mm. perfect for any colour, you know, obviously weddings. Yeah, and the same for the floor, it makes an impact. What's the average that brides spend on a wedding when they come and have a wedding here? Do you know that, Mr? Haven't a clue, haven't a clue. We're very old-fashioned here, I think, in terms of nothing has changed for the last 20 years, really, in terms of pricing and uh, how we do things. The thing is, isn't it, really, now it's how to get the thing started, because no one here has a clue. Uh, they're all, you know, hopeless. I mean, we're lacking everything, really. Mm. We produce a wedding magazine that goes to John Lewis and Debenham stores. Yes. And we can put you in our magazine for free in the venue section. Yes, well, yeah, give, yeah. give us a call. You know, we've got a huge list of contacts, you know, suppliers, local suppliers that can provide, you know, everything mm. you see. Well, of course, I'm not the person there, you see. I'm a halfwit, so we need... Uh... Darling, instead of being so negative, thank you very much is what he should have said. Yes. He's not very good at saying thank you, no. Mr. Dean. <laughs> no, well, that's all right. That's no, all right. I'm, but, darling, you've I'm just had... A, listen, darling, you've had a wonderful offer, and oh, I, yes. what you need to say is, yes, please, can I have your card? Yes. Instead of always thinking about the negatives, just say, yes, any help that you, yes. uh, you offer, I will gratefully accept. Yes, that's, that's essential. Thank yes. you. With the business on a knife edge, Alex fears David's negative attitude might just make things worse. Mr D. Yep. So, darling, listen, I want you to be positive. You know, I'm doing my best I can to try and improve things here. And all you do is constantly run down the hotel. And I don't know how you expect people to then be willing to put their events in your hands when you keep on telling people how badly you do everything. I'm mad in the, uh, in, in, the, in the past, as it were. I can just see uh, how, how difficult it's going to be to, uh, to alter the way the hotel is run. It's, well, then uh... just give up all hope. Close the doors, throw away the key and just walk away from it all. Because if you honestly think that, what is the point? But you must also think that I've been here 12 years and I've actually lost a million pounds since I've been here. And that's a pretty heavy burden to take, to carry. I know, but stop the rot now, darling. Oh, absolutely, Don't yes. keep on harping on about what should have happened no, ten years ago and no, didn't. No, it should uh, happen this year, is what you should be saying. No. Right, this is the year that everything changes. Because otherwise, I just I can't be asked to do this. You no, know. I'm sure you're right, Phil. I'm sure you're right. I am right. Bum, bum. Hmm. Bum, bum. Bollocks. All three of those ladies were so enthusiastic and actually so pleasant to Mr Donegan. On the other hand, he drove me completely potty because I was hoping that he would take more initiative and talk more to those ladies and get as much information as he could out of them instead of constantly harping on about the inadequacies of himself and the hotel. Despite her frustration, Alex is prepared to give David one last chance to impress her and sell his struggling hotel. She wants to showcase the ballroom by hosting a special dance event. Alex will be inviting the press and some potentially valuable contacts in events organising. But without an enthusiastic and professional owner, it could be a disaster. Two weeks later, and Alex is back, hoping the Rutland Arms and its owner are ready for the big event. Oh, <laughs> oh, why oh you catnapping. Yes, why do I always like to have a little... Little snooze. Snooze in the afternoon. Yeah. So what are we doing? Well, I want to find out what's been happening since I was last here. Uh, excuse me, i blow my nose. Um, what's been happening to you last here? Any good news for me? Um, not really. <laughs> The good news is that Mr Donegan has delegated responsibility for the smooth running of today's event to former receptionist Katie, Rutland's new deputy manager and events coordinator. 
Hello. Hi, right? I'm good, doll. How are you? I'm not bad, thank you. I hear you've been given the title of Functions and Events Coordinator. Yeah, it's definitely something I'm looking forward to, a challenge. Although it seems like quite a lot to learn in the beginning, as long as you're kind of pretty organised, it's... Very organised. It, <laughs> well, that's good. That someone needs to be around here. And I'm glad that he's had the sense to put you in charge of something that he has absolutely no skill in yeah. doing, actually. Thank you. No problem. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. See you later. Thank you. With Katie in charge, the setting up of the room runs like clockwork. The two little mirrors there that need cleaning. And that takes some shifting. Swing dancing lessons are soon underway. There's only one technical move in this whole class. Testing the newly renovated dance floor to the max. But in the break before the big event, it's now time for Mr. Donegan to step into the fray and impress a journalist from Derbyshire Life magazine with his charm and wit. You're going to behave? Absolutely, yes. Do you promise me? Oh, indeed, yes, I will. I'll be really serious. OK. Excellent, I okay. will do my best. Thank you, darling. Go. Follow me. <laughs> but while Alex so, does her bit to sell the positives... I'm hoping that this will be the beginning of whole new aspect of the hotel success. Yeah. The restaurant's very good. I think there's nothing else in the centre of Bakewell that has this facility and I think it's very underutilised. And David's foot is heading firmly for his mouth. Um, the business has been run, really. It's, it's been run very badly by me. The thing is, there's not much to be cheerful about or to smile about um, in the past. But there will be in the future, of course. Good. So, um, you, that's the way you have to think, yes. isn't it? It's amazing what you've done here, and you know, I, I really hope that you manage to, you know, take it to the next sort of the next era of the hotel, and I wish you the very best. Thank you very much indeed. It's a close call, but the unpredictable owner has snatched victory from the jaws of defeat. Beauty and the beast. I won't say who the uh, the beast is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How gallant. <laughs> <laughs> The guests are happy. Well, I last danced in 1954, so... <laughs> <laughs> and the party gets into full swing. <laughs> the new ballroom is a big hit. Nice venue, good music. And any hotel with a dance floor is going to have the place that's going to be rocking. Huge potential. Wonderful, we're having a great time. It's really, really gone extremely well. We will be doing some business with Rutland Arms, hopefully in the very near future. Definitely tonight has made you see what you can do with the place. Um, be really good to try and sell anything now because you've seen what a simple dance can do. It's great PR, and the event is even bringing in some income, with many of the dancers booking rooms for the night. Isn't it wonderful to see that room full of people? Oh, well, I've, I've never seen it. Um filled with people before. So, yes, it is. Up until this, we've really had no chance because there's been no-one here with any enthusiasm, any knowledge. I mean, if you could do six events a year in your quiet season, in the middle of the week... I feel enormously encouraged, Mr D. I really do. I can see it being suitable for a lot of different yes. occasions. So at least now we know where we, where we should be going. So that's, uh, that's a start, isn't it? Well, yes, I think it's a start. The fact that you're on the right path has got to be a positive. Mm. Yes, uh, I think that's right. But uh, my abiding memory of you was your lovely bosom. I mean, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. I, I, had to, I thought myself, I must, must not look at you. <laughs> I've got to look you in the eye. It was quite difficult, actually. Why, well, thank you, yeah. darling. <laughs> <laughs> It's first class for the hotel. Um, and I, of course, I've got to thank Alex because uh, she has shown us the, the way forward. And, uh, and all we have to do, hopefully, is follow her directions. I'm so happy that the room is finally being used for what it was designed for. I just hope that even an iota of the enthusiasm of these dancers can transmit itself to Mr Donegan to give him some faith and hope for the future. Next time, the hotel inspector is all shook up. You've got over 30 starters. You've got over 40 maids. Is that a bad thing? Why are they trying to kill me? They're throwing away the opportunity to make money here. She's missing the point totally. 
It's an all singing, all dancing brand new series and it's absolutely live. Join us this Sunday as six groups do battle to win your adoration. Don't miss Don't Stop Believing with Emma Bunton at 5.45 here on Channel 5. Where next, it's brand new Crimes That Shook the World.